All right, well, I've got this little thing I like to do for the YouTube video, make sure I get it on camera. Beautiful, very authentic. We've got Nick Jones here today, ladies and gentlemen. How's that? I'm, I'm impressed. Welcome back to the show, everyone. We step out of the usual acting industry today for something a little bit different. I'm chatting with longtime friend and bodybuilding mentor, Nick Jones. Nick's a bodybuilder and owner of Gentech Nutrition, which he founded in 1999. Nick has devoted 33 years of his life to nutrition, health and wellness, as well as the art of bodybuilding. As a bodybuilder, it is Nick's goal to improve the quality of life and enhance performance through superior nutrition, exercise and specific supplementation. Nick's dedication to bodybuilding has paid dividends throughout the past 28 years and has been justified by his achievements through local, national and international platforms. His achievements include Mr. World, Mr. Australia, Mr. Australasia, and the prestigious Mr. Universe competition. I reached out to Nick because I wanted to talk to him about health and wellness and how actors can benefit from living a healthy lifestyle to benefit their acting career. We end up talking a lot more on the acting side of things than I expected with a look into Nick's own podcast, Inspiration, and how actors can learn from everyone's life journeys to create their characters. This is a great chat with Nick, and I hope you enjoy it and take something away for your own health and well-being. So here we go, and I'll see you on set, guys. Nick, welcome to the show, mate. David, thank you. Thank you for coming no, along. Thank you for having me. Thank you. I was really, uh, I'm actually excited about it. I was looking forward to it, you know, seeing you evolve over the years, and you've gone through a bit of a quickening in the last five to ten. I'm really, uh, mm. I'm really keen to chat. I've, I've been trying to work out how long we've known each other. Um, I think Facebook has this as friends since 2010, uh, which I, I think that seems reasonable. It's about the time I met you at the Australian Muscle Store. You were doing a promo for your um, your DVD, uh, Natural Reinvention, which um, you were very kind and gave me a copy of. Wow. And that was our journey started from there, I think, if you remember. Yeah, well, that would have been 2007, that DVD. Mm. Oh, well, there you go. Even yeah. longer. Yeah. 15 years. Jeez. Time just, we're all getting old. Oh, mate, we? it doesn't slow down. That's for sure. <laughs> I turn 50 next oh, week. Oh, mate, welcome to the club. Welcome to the, so you were born, <laughs> what, you were 73, were you? I'm a 73 baby. I'm yeah. a 71. I'm yeah. a couple of years ahead, mate. Same as, same as my wife. Really? Kelly's a 71 I, baby. You know yeah, something so. special about her, mate. Now I know what it is. The year of the, <laughs> uh, we're year of the pig, me and your missus. They're good, the pigs, the boars. That's right. Yeah, yeah. On the ball, so the same as um, um, my star signs, Taurus. Oh so my God, they double. work hand in hand. Oh, double. <laughs> Nick, I, I want to talk about our journey together and and what I've learned from you as a bodybuilder. But um, I've explained in the opening address for this podcast um, that uh, this podcast is about actors, mm. but um, you're not an actor per se. Yeah. I want to talk to you about your um, uh, your background in bodybuilding and you're a very media excuse me let's speak english today david <laughs> i've asked you to come on the show to talk about health and well-being and how actors can benefit from benefit from a healthy lifestyle mm. both personally and for that for their mm. acting um firstly though could i ask you to give us a little insight into nick jones oh. where did you grow up how did you get into bodybuilding and and the evolution of uh your company gentech nutrition and also we we did chat at the start You've got a little bit of acting background there, so maybe we can touch on that sure, as well. Sure, sure, sure. Geez, uh, could be a long, uh, uh, convoluted story, but I'll, I'll make it as quick as possible. <laughs> I love it. You don't it. want to sit around listening to my background all day, but uh, I was born in the UK. I was born in Essex in the UK. Mom and dad and my older brother, Chris, 18 months old, we moved to Australia in 73. I was just 18 months old as a baby. Moved to Adelaide, and then um, mum, mum whisked, whisked us off to America, myself and my brother and her to study. She studied beauty therapy. So I actually did my first year of schooling in Washington, D.C. in uh, 1976. We were there and uh, I loved it. We, we lived with my auntie and uncle and my, my two cousins for a year there and went back to the U.K. for a few months after that. But mum and dad split up at quite an early age. So that was I was about six when we came back. They split up. So I had a I'm not going to say a typical childhood with a single parent because it sort of wasn't typical back then. I mean, most of my friends, I don't think I had any friends through school that had single parent. I don't think I, I really had okay. any. Um, so it was unusual back then. So mum, you know, mum mm. worked hard as a beauty therapist to try and, uh, you know, keep a roof over her head, which she did, you know, extremely well. God bless her. 
um, you know, without, you know, some downfalls there and some, it must have been so hard. We had no family around and she was looking after two mm. boys on her own. We didn't see dad for many, 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 many years. So Chris and I grew up, uh, we all ended up in a uh, housing commission, some affordable housing for mum, which helped her financially. Probably didn't help us. At the time I was uh, 15 when we moved into housing commission in Morpherville. Prior to that, I did start doing quite a bit of work. I, um, I did a photo shoot with a friend of mine now, Greg Schwark. Do you know Schwarky in Adelaide? No, not by name. A lot no. of your crew might know him. So Schwarky's a photographer. He's on Leader Street there, down the road from the old La Cornus. And uh, so Schwarky did a lot with Tanya Power Model Agency. He, he did a lot of photography mm -hmm. over the years. So um, I did a shoot with him when I was about 14 and started getting some work with McLeod's. So I'm probably talking, I don't even think they're around now, McLeod's. They were in Rundle Mall, but I, I did a bunch of mm. I did a bunch of um, catalog stuff as a teenager, and and a bunch of commercials. Did a KFC commercial, and I did a commercial where I did have to act. I had the um, what's it called? Not the lead, one down from the lead, the supporting the support. support. So I, I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like support in uh, it was a government funded commercial, and we were at a teenage party, and I was spiking the punch with some alcohol and the. <laughs> The tea and that was. Do you know who your children are mixing with tonight? So me and the and the lead were spiking the punch there, which wasn't too far from the truth. As time went on, and we ended up in housing commission, and and uh, the environment we lived in was pretty uh, rough. Uh, I got a, in a, a lot of trouble as a teenager, a lot of legal trouble, and there was a lot of violence and oh, okay. and drugs and alcohol, and it was just it was just the environment, David. You know and. Uh, I've got so much to be grateful for to bodybuilding because it really did save me. You know, bodybuilding gave me mm. a sense of, it wasn't even purpose, but it gave me a sense of um, self-discipline. It gave me a sense of, I mean, I was inspired very much by Stallone back then in First Blood and and uh, and Arnold in Commando who had just come out Commando. So I was watching those movies as a young teen, was really impressed by the look of the guys not just to attract the opposite sex or just the visual side, but I think it was a, a deep, um, it's probably something deep in my psyche, that muscular, strong, confident superhero, you know, that could, that mm. could fight off evil and that, that was, um, could, could protect those around them. And, and so I was really drawn to the physiques of those guys and, uh, and bodybuilding showed me that the effort that I put into something really gave me a reward quite quickly and and, and it, it formed a, a self-discipline and it formed a sense of a certain sense of confidence and self-esteem and it wasn't just narcissistic narcissistic it was the feeling i got from exercising and training and making physical change and seeing that change um mm. so bodybuilding for me really in many ways it saved me david it saved me from a life of violence and crime and and, and drugs and alcohol really to be brutally honest so I've got a lot to be thankful for. And, and of course, I went on with my bodybuilding and traveled the world and competed in the world championships, the Mr. Universe five times. I've won many yes. national titles. And and I still, to this day, at 51, nearly 52 years of age, I think now, David, I really reap the benefits of the bodybuilding lifestyle. And it's, um, and it's something that's very metaphorical. I'm quite philosophical. I read quite a bit. Um, of course, in my troubled teenage years, when I was coming out of all the trouble, I started looking for answers. I didn't grow up with religion, but I started reading uh, a lot of books on metaphysics and quantum physics and really new age thinking, which resonated with me. So I got into my mm. meditation and, and uh, did all kinds of workshops from American Indian sweat lodges to, to breathing technique and rebirthing. And um, so I had to work through a lot of anger as a child i had to work through a lot and um that was the vehicle for me to do that and get some sort of understanding and self-awareness so it all it all played in together my bodybuilding was never just about building big biceps it was really about a personal journey of self-discovery of self-development you think it's just a physical development um you know but I learned very early on that I'm a, I'm a spiritual being having a human experience. And, and this human experience is, this is one part of it, developing the self physically. But certainly with everything we, we learn through the practices of bodybuilding, um, it's very much a spiritual journey, just as much as physical. So um, that's how I got into it. And that's how I've utilized it. And, and the, the metaphor of bodybuilding is, you know, when we're in the gym and, and we're putting stress on our body, the response to the stress is growth. So stress creates mm. growth. 
And I've been able to understand that as a, as a philosophy and apply that to all parts of my life where stress is necessary for growth. It's not something to run from. It's not something to oppress and suppress and try and get around. You have to, you cop, we cop stress. We, we do. And it, and it causes growth. Mm. So, um, so that's, and that's, that's something you can use across uh, all aspects of your life. And we'll, we'll dive absolutely. into that to, to get your thoughts on how actors can use that. So, um, so you now, you run uh, Gentech um, uh, Nutrition. Yes. Uh, how long have you been? You've had that up for quite a while now. Long time, David. Uh, 2000, I brought out my first product. So it's really 22, 23 years mm -hmm. now. And you started in South Australia with Gentech? Absolutely. You? Yeah, I started as a uh, distribution business uh, out of my garage. And um, I'd worked for a great Australian brand called Masashi for about seven years at that stage. And I had a bit of a, the, the original owner was a brilliant, brilliant man, Tim Horwood. For the, the, the formulations and the quality of the products was was the best the best in the market. And I used mm -hmm. a lot of the products and I was actively competitive in the Mr. Universe at the time. So year after year, I was going to the Nabba Universe and trying to win that title. And when I finished up with them in 99, I was getting ready for the 99 Universe and, and um I thought, well, I'll, I'll, I'll prepare. I've got enough money saved. I'll prepare as a full-time bodybuilder and go and try and win it this year because I'd already competed twice and placed fourth and, and third the previous years. So in 99, I was prepping for the show and kind of realized after a couple of weeks, I was getting a lot of job offers from other companies to become a sales rep for them because uh, I'd done quite a good job for Masashi in Adelaide at the time. And uh, I didn't really want to work for anyone else, but realized it was helpful to my bodybuilding to have something outside of bodybuilding. So to have some work, mm. to have a discipline, to have, uh, you know, a job where I had to rock up every day and, and do the work, even though I didn't really feel like it, I recognized that as being important. So, um, so I started Gentech and I started distributing other brands in South Australia and driving around in my mates and my mate, my bodybuilding friend, uh, Scotty had moved back to Canada at the time of me finishing with Masashi. And, and of course I didn't have a car, I had to hand the car back. And uh, he said to me, use my car for your little business and, and uh, when you can afford your own car, sell mine and wire me the money. So I'm forever grateful for that because I was driving around this little shipbox uh, Toyota Corolla it was to all the retailers and <laughs> taking orders and delivering the products the next day. And as I could afford to, well, it was really the, 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 the thing that stimulated the release of my own brand and own products, it was never a dream to have my own supplement company, but because I was using these other brands and products, I wasn't using Masashi anymore. I was getting ready for the Mr. Universe, which was the ultimate title to me. I wanted to be using the best quality products. I didn't know the quality of the raw materials that these other brands were using. So I started researching the best quality creatine, the best quality glutamine. Uh, and then I just, I, I sourced them and then I sourced a lab in Victoria and thought, I'll, I'll bring out my own. So at least I know what I'm getting. And then I'm also in control of my own stock levels because there were brands I was distributing who had run out of product. And when they'd run out of product that I'd made popular uh, out in the market, I couldn't supply it. I couldn't sell it. They were restricting my ability to make money and to do business. So that was quite frustrating for me. So starting my own brand, there was, there was two benefits. One was I knew the quality of the product that I was using and I demanded a high quality product. So I've always been a, I've always been a healthy bodybuilder, not just about building a big shredded physique. It's been about health the whole way along as well. So awesome. I wanted to be using the best quality raw materials personally. And then I wanted a sustainable business that I was in control of. So I started bringing out my own products in 2000 with creatine and glutamine. And as the, and the business is kind of still the same. It's very unorthodox. You wouldn't start a business like this today, but as I could afford mm. to bring out new formulations or reformulate and improve current uh, formulations and products, I would do so. And I still do that to this day, basically. And, and the biggest thing that I get from you and your videos on Instagram and you're talking about your products and talking about bodybuilding is, is your knowledge and understanding of the the quality of these ingredients and how they work and how they work with the body. Um, have you have you been to university or you, is this all what you've learned on the go, on the fly, um, in the trenches, so to speak? Yeah, it's a good question. I um, uh, Look, don't be impressed with the knowledge because it's all I know. Let me let me start with that. Do not be impressed. I don't know anything else. Um, but I, 
but that's good. You know everything that you you need to know for your business and your and your lifestyle, uh, being a bodybuilder. So that's absolutely, absolutely, it's my passion. It's been my passion for many, mm. many, many years, and I'm still fascinated by it. I'm, I'm occlusion training with doing arm training with occlusion bands at the moment, which I haven't done ever. I've trained 35 years, so I'm still doing new stuff after 35 years, and it's. Um, it keeps me inspired. It keeps me engaged. It keeps me excited to a certain degree to see trying something and see what the result is. So I really learned back in the day, it was before the internet. It was about the turn. No, it was before the internet when I really started reading about nutrition and reading about training and um, reading about supplements because it would have been the early 90s. Like I started, I think my first contest was 90 or 91. So I was, I was reading yeah. and... and I was never a great student at school. I was so distracted, you know, and it was a pretty unstable environment that I lived in. So when I want to know something, I'm probably very good at researching it and finding the information. And that information then sticks at that point in time. But it's mm. really through a drive, a drive, a passionate drive for knowledge on that topic at that point in time. So everything that I've learned has really been through reading and then applying to myself or a lot of the athletes around me and measuring the results. So that's really where my knowledge base comes from. It's just a lot of books, um, these days internet, but again, you've got to be very, you, you've got to decipher the information more so now than ever. Who's written it? What have they done? What do they know? Um, you know, I mean, if I'm going to climb Everest, I want to make sure that my guide has been to the top. I want to make sure he's been to the top. I don't want to, like, I'm not shunning science at all. Science is great. But I don't want a guide that's read it in a book on how to get to the top of Everest. I want to listen to someone who's been there. So I'm very big on experience mm. along with the technical knowledge. It's interesting because I've just, I was on a Zoom call just before this with an um, uh, acting coach of mine, Jeff Seymour, and, and he proclaims a lot to... Um, because acting has coaches galore out right. there. And he says, go and check them out on IMDb and see what they've done. And, uh, and a lot of acting coaches have never been on TV. Wow. They've never been in films wow. and they don't do it. And that, that'd be like me walking into a supplement shop and seeing an overweight uh, a person who's uh, eating a, a hamburger saying, yeah, you need some of this and you need some it's of true. that. You know, and that does happen. It's true. So you've learnt on the go and obviously – you've competed in bodybuilding at and what we would call an elite level. So you've had to learn how your body made it to the top, didn't you? So mm. that's, that's brilliant. Mm. Absolutely. Mm. Absolutely. Yeah. It is like, that. And I think that, it's important to be the image of your business, but it's not even, not even a drive for that. It's like, what are you passionate about? If you're passionate about it, you do it. And then I think you get to a stage where you're passionate about it. You do it. You've done it. You're still living it and breathing it. Then you, then you can teach. But I really feel to truly understand something, you can't understand something by reading about it, by studying it. You've got to experience it to understand it. And once you understand it, I think that's when you can teach it. Awesome. You know? Um, Nick, I want to touch quickly. Um, you run a, your own podcast now called Inspired, mm. where you're talking to people who have – have got stories about their background where they've struggled mm. to get to where they're at. And, and you've, you've delved into it a little bit now. And this is big for actors. It's about understanding characters and, and persons. Mm. So what inspired you to start your podcast? And, and what have you gathered in your own learnings from the people you've spoken to so far? Well, great question. I mean, let me start with I love acting. I love, I love the arts. I... I don't know how, but I've been lucky enough to work with a lot of people in the arts at different stages. And there's such an openness and a lack of judgment and, a, a, you know, a free spirit and a freedom to explore and go into the dark places, shoot for the light, mm. but go dark and go deep and really explore at, at a level that, you know, most people won't and certainly won't talk about. So I've got to say, I love the arts. And, and uh, I've been fortunate enough to have some friends that are artists and, and I've had some on my podcast. I've had a bit of a break from the podcast. It's just really a financial thing. It's quite costly. And I've just put some money into advertising. Uh, but I do want to get back to it. Awesome. What have I learned from them? What I've learned is, and what I believe, is everyone, everyone 
goes through hardship. Everyone, you know, this lifetime. I mean, I've I've been very fortunate with my readings on metaphysics and 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 again, all my readings on metaphysics and quantum physics and my delving into meditation and rebirthing and sweat lodging and all of that stuff I did and still do really came uh, and was born out of my struggles, out of my darkness. Everyone's going through something in this lifetime everyone goes through something hey no one's getting out alive david <laughs> no one's getting out alive like <laughs> right so what i've learned from the podcast from people from so many people is uh is certainly that and what i have learned is when you are in the darkest times when you are in uh, states of depression true depression when you're not seeing any light and you're in complete darkness I think there's no such thing as being strong and being motivated and having drive. Forget that. You mu you get to a place where you actually give up. For me, you, you actually give up and you let go and you sit in the darkness and it's a horrible place to be, horrible place to be. I don't wish it upon anyone. However, it's a great place on which to build. And it's an old cliche. The darkest time is just before dawn. So when I talk to friends and colleagues that are going through depression, I'm not sadistic, but I get a little bit excited for them. And I feel a sense of inspiration coming because I know that this is a truth. I've lived it. I've breathed it. I've witnessed it. I've seen it. Um, the darkest time is just before dawn. And I think what people need in their darkest time is not motivation, is not a pep talk, is not to get up and, and, and push on. It's to let go and to get hope, to have some hope. It's just that little bit of hope. That li as soon as you can see that little bit of light, and it will come, even if you're in darkness, it will come. It, it will come. The darkest time is just before the dawn. The dawn always comes. But they just, I didn't, don't even know it's such a, such a hard thing to explain that true depression, but you just got to give up, let go and just be. And you just have to wait sometimes and that light will peek through, but you need hope. So I got to say, if I start going down, because depression runs in my family, if I start to go down and that black dog comes and just sits sort of out of nowhere, just comes and you're like, mm. oh, what are you doing back here? Like, you know, I've, I've got a beautiful wife, the love of my life. I have three beautiful children. I'm living in a nice home. I get, I've got, I'm able-bodied. I'm healthy and I'm strong and I get to exercise and I've got great friends and, you know, we, 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 we have clean air and clean water and sewerage and, and, and process healthy food and heating and, you know, running water. And it, mate, we, we just, we have so much these days, but doesn't matter. You can be a multi-billionaire and have depression right so mm. what i do i've got to say what i do when that black black dog starts to come and sit that's when i know i have to get up early i have to spend some time in nature i've got to go for a walk first thing in the morning and i've got to start the gratitude i've got to start my day with listing and thinking of all the things i have to be grateful for so between that and spending some time in nature, that's a that's a good start. That's a good start to remind me mm. I have got everything I need. It's okay to sit in the darkness a little bit. It's okay to be a little sad. It's a human condition. We're spiritual beings having a human experience. And the emotion is part of being human. Sadness, happiness, positivity, negativity. It's all a part of being complete and being human. And it's okay right it's okay so it's um i don't know how i got that far down that rabbit hole i can't even remember what the question was dave to be honest but i guess um no the inspired inspired podcast again i was inspired to, mm. to to get that off my chest um you know just just like the people that come on the podcast we all go through something all of us i don't think anyone's getting out unscathed you know if we were perfect we wouldn't be here Right. None of us are perfect. We're both positive and negative. It's part of being complete. And, uh, and, and, you know, I think actors, I think actors more than anyone understand exactly what, I, what it is I'm saying, because I find the arts, a lot of the arts come from darkness and depression, especially musicians, singers, musicians. Mm -hmm. you, I know it. I can feel it. 
I can feel it with so much real music, generally a little bit older, wiser musicians that have been around, actors a little bit older, wiser. You've got children, you're married, you've got a family, you, you know, you, you've done some tough stuff with your other work and we've all been through some stuff. We've all got a story. So with the Inspired mm. Podcast, I'm so grateful that my guests come and share their story because, again, when someone is in the pit, all they need is a bit of hope. They go, oh, Vince did it. David did it. Nick did it. Oh, they did it. They did it. He seems to be going all right now. Wonder what he did. Hey, Nick, what did you do when you were really dark? What did you do? So that's another really key thing to do when the black dog's hanging around. You'll know someone that's been through some shit. And they seem yeah. to be doing all right. They seem to be pretty happy most of the time. They seem to be healthy. They seem to be doing all right. Ask them what they did. And I guarantee it, anyone that's been through depression, they will hold out their hand and they'll say, David, come with me, my friend. Let me show you what helped me. And hopefully it helps you. I love that. Mm. I love that. And there's, I think there's two things in that um, from an acting perspective, both for developing characters on set and and drawing on that but actors as well because we have our, our ups and downs like mm. everyone else you know there's moments in there where you just think why am i doing this and why am i struggling um and, and is it me and you get that depression so the depression can come in all sorts of formats you know it's either you can see it coming or you just don't know why you feel like shit today yep. so um and i love that um Yes, we call you a bodybuilder. We call myself a bodybuilder. But it's what we've learnt in that style of training and and the exercise regimes and everything. So, um, you seem to be drawing on that and and delivering that to the world now through your videos on Instagram, so, uh, letting people know that it's not about having the big biceps and looking great, even though you've you know, you you look fantastic on stage when you've done your things. But it's about encouraging that health and that wellness. My, my wife's going to love this because she's been trying to get me to do the meditation for a long time now. She's right into it. She's doing all the wellness for children awesome. with her daycare. So she's learning uh, wellness for children. Awesome. That seems to be a big new buzzword these days, isn't it? Wellness, yeah. It, it, uh, and, and it's big in the US, I believe. I've got a friend, a very close friend that mm. travels back and forth, and he's saying the wellness consultancy is a, is a really growing industry over there. Now, I did a I did a course called Wellness Consultancy back when I was 21 in Adelaide. It was a naturopathic college. And um, wow. yeah, so I guess I was doing a lot of this stuff a long, long time ago without sort of putting a tag or a label on it. But I mean, wellness, I don't know. I, I think living well, living well in whatever format, I think psychologically and spiritually, as well as physically, I think living well, I mean, what else have you got, David? You know, like you, you're, if you're not living well, you don't have much to offer, right? So I think, again, we go through these stages in our life and we become different people. And part of becoming different people is letting go of the old you. Um, and you need, to, you need to do that as we get more responsibility, as we get older, as we get more understanding, as we get older. You kind of, you do, you let go of certain parts of yourself and you take on these new new parts and ever-evolving parts. And as you can do that more and more, I guess you, you get to a point, and you can only do that when you're aware, when you have some self-awareness. Um, you can only do that. And when you are well, when you are, when you are not spending each day poisoning your body, you get up in the morning. A lot of, hey, a lot of people poison themselves throughout the day with the thoughts that they have, with the food they eat or don't eat, with the drugs and alcohol they take, uh, with the lack of water. I mean, th there's three types of stress that cause disease. There's chemical stress, which doesn't have to just be drugs and alcohol. It can be all those things I was talking about. It can be lack of fresh air. Um, uh, a to toxic environment like living in the middle of the city can be not enough water can be too much food can be not enough food the wrong sort of food so there's so there's chemical stress then there's physical stress so physical stress can be not exercising for some people other people can be too much exercising we can overtrain you know that as well um, yes, i mean physical yeah. stress can fall off a ladder and hurt yourself that's physical stress that causes disease so there's there's a chemical there's um, physical and then there's mental and emotional stress. When you've got all three of those, you're bound for burnout. You're destined for burnout. Mm. Um, I reckon we can cop two for a little while. 
So physical stress for us is good. We make it a good stress. Chemical stress, not so good for us. Mental and emotional stress is a given. We're married, we're children, we're trying to make ends meet, we're trying to pay bills. That's a given. That's a given. So no, you're going to have that one. The mental and emotional stress, you are going to have that unless you're living on a mountaintop in the Himalayas eating alfalfa sprouts, right? You won't have any of the stress, right? But that's not reality. We're in the game, David. We're not sitting yes. on the sidelines. We're in it. Look at you. you you've transformed yourself. You're acting now at, at this stage of your life. You took on a what was obviously a hobby and you're making it a profession and now you've, you've evolved into your podcast. You. And it's, it's, it's very inspiring to see. To be honest, mate, it's really Thank inspiring you. to Thank see. You. I was, I was uh, blown away when I saw some of your your casting that you would upload onto your social media. I was like, wow, he's really doing it, and he's good. Ah, oh, that's nice to hear that sort of feedback, Nick. Thank you. Thank you very much. But it it's, is. I mean, how many people start a new career path in their forties? Yeah, yeah. Most people are starting to settle down, and it's and it's not just another career path. It's one of those uh, acting is such a tough industry because it is full of rejection yep. over and over and <laughs> over. I mean, imagine going, imagine go. People go for a, a job interview. You know, you might get a couple of job interviews, but you're eventually going to get a job pretty yep. quick. But actors, they do job interview after job interview, and they might do a hundred to get one one job. So, and how do you deal uh, with that? How do you do you develop a thick skin? How do you deal with that? Because I used to go for castings as well when I was a teenager for a bunch of stuff. I, I think I, I'm lucky. I mean, I go through the same thing every other actor is, but um, for me, I don't need the job because I still have my my real job. I like to I call it my real job. Uh, and I'm 10 years out from retirement, wow. so I'm looking forward to when I retire and I get my, my pension at the end, then I'll be able to focus on the acting. But even then, I don't need to rely on that yet. So... As long as I'm still having fun with the acting, that's all that matters. So um, I see an audition as a job. They've wanted to see me, so I deliver and I walk out of the room and I go, well, there we go. If you get it, you get it. If you don't, well, there's always the next one. So. You let go. You let go. I mean, you deliver mm. and you let go. Mm. And it's, I, I love that everything we're talking so far just is so pertinent for actors, but so pertinent for everyone else as well, isn't Absolutely. it? So it's 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 awesome. Mm. But... Nick, I, I wondered while we're talking about actors and, and actors have, like many other careers, of course, again, this question will um, you be able to answer for everyone, with demanding schedules and, and travel frequently and, and uh, uh, being on the, uh, not in your normal environment, being able to eat the way you would normally do, how do actors, how would they maintain a healthy and balanced diet while they're on the go? How do you see people to stick with that when it's easy to just go and have the Maccas mm. or a burger and chips? Yeah, it's a, it's a great question. I think there's two things here. One is uh, discipline of being organised with your food. I mean, as bodybuilders, mm. we pack it in Tupperware. We've done it for years. It's just part of what we do. Um, so that's one side of doing it. And then I, I totally get it if people don't have the discipline and don't want to be eating out of lunchboxes. So that that's one. But the other thing is choices. You know, David, you can... I could eat out three times a day and be in great shape, right? And even now, if, look, if I get stuck, if I have to run out of the house on the weekends with the kids because we're running late for soccer in the morning and then and then swimming for the kids is on straight after and then we've got to get to tutoring and my kids are so busy, they're so busy. So my weekends are probably even busier than my weekdays running my businesses. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, when I have to make choices, let's say we go through, we go through McDonald's, I have my brekkie at home, we go to soccer, um, and then before or after swimming, we'll go through Macca's and I'll buy the kids a bacon and egg McMuffin. They're kids. Um, They've got the metabolism that goes They with absolutely <laughs> do. I'll get four eggs. I'll get sometimes six eggs. If I'm dieting, I'll get six eggs. It's like six bucks. They're a dollar each. And I'll have two of the yolks and six of the whites and chuck the other yolks away. Um, you know, the, another thing I'll do if we go past through McDonald's, I've got no other choices. I'm, I haven't been organized. I'll buy a chicken salad with double chicken. Um, I go out to a restaurant. I went out last night and I am I am getting in shape for something at the moment. So we had a family dinner last night and I got salmon with um, steamed green veggies and a baked potato. Like it's what I would normally eat. Mm -hmm. So it's choices, right? It's really choices. Uh, and education wise, I think, folks, if you can be mindful, protein is derived from the Greek word. Um, protein, but pro means uh, it means of first importance, means primary, 
means our first importance. Wow. So 80% of our dry body weight is protein. So our skin, hair, eyes, nails, teeth, uh, muscle, connective tissue, immune system, percentage of blood, hormones, all made of protein or amino acids, 80%. So it does have to be in f- f- first importance. So lean source proteins, I believe at every meal are crucial because they cause that sati- satiety as well. You, you're not hungry after eating some chicken breast or some fish or some lean beef or eggs. You're not, you're not so hungry after eating that. It, it, you know, it keeps you, doesn't keep you full and bloated, but it keeps you, look, there are essential amino acids, essential proteins. They're essential mm. for life. So they're essential. Carbohydrates are not essential. We need them. They're like fuel. They're fuel for our body, like petrol in the car. We need a certain amount. And we certainly need the fibrous ones, the green veggies. We need those fibrous vegetables to keep our intestines clean and keep our digestive system working well and our metabolism ticking along. So lean source proteins and the fibrous vegetables, those are foods that will stimulate your metabolism. Those are foods that will maintain your lean body structure and good health and well-being. The carbohydrates is something you manipulate. Like anyone and everyone, the, the problem is we're so lazy and it's all about convenience. Anyone and everyone that wants to lose some body fat, you must eliminate sugar, eliminate it. Sugar, gone. And you must eliminate processed carbohydrates. Chips, crackers, you know, all those processed carbs, they're the all two the types stuff. of foods you must eliminate, right? But they're tasty when we're unorganized and we don't have our other foods they're really easy to grab and when you start eating those sorts of foods when you are hungry you will eat way 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 too much your blood sugar will spike when you eat those types of foods your body produces a hormone called insulin and insulin's a storing hormone insulin won't allow you to release fat and burn fat as fuel so insulin long-term overproduction of insulin of course causes adult onset diabetes obesity heart disease so Sugar is the poison. Sugar and starch has the same effect in the body. Sugar and starch are poison to us. Lean source proteins, fresh fruits and vegetables, be well hydrated, make good choices. Try and be disciplined and organized. And if you're not, you make good choices when you're going to the cafe. Mm. And so, you know, with actors, I mean, they're not professional um, bodybuilders or, or anything like that. So they don't have to be strict like we are when we're dieting i'm i'm trying to i'm trying to get into shape now to compete in september and, awesome. and I'll, I'll have a quick i'll have a quick chat before we finish about um losing weight when you're you're 50 years awesome. old it seems to be a lot harder but so people don't need to be so disciplined 100 percent, and it's about having that balance mm-hmm. in their their life isn't mm-hmm. it so what would you um tell actors what sort of process to develop in their exercise and their dieting and their eating regime mm. without actually being a bodybuilder and strict and eating their chicken and rice and yeah vegetables. good question <laughs> yeah no exactly no i absolutely get it because it's become second nature for us we've been eating this mm. way for 20 some years 30 years uh again cho- choose choose the right foods it's choices choose lean source proteins eat your protein first so don't start on the breads and the processed carbohydrates when you're sitting down to a meal. Don't start on that. Start on the protein first, the lean source proteins. Make sure you're getting some fresh fruit and veggies with those proteins. Make sure you're hydrated. Yeah, so so choose those lean source proteins. Eat the protein first. It is, is of first importance. Certainly enjoy your food. Don't don't restrict yourself. Like it, it's I, I don't I don't it's not like I can't eat that and I, I can only eat that. I enjoy my food now. I enjoy my bodybuilding food. Mm-hmm. I I have chicken thighs and, and make them taste nice with different marinades. I enjoy a beautiful piece of uh, fillet steak. I enjoy salmon. I enjoy fish. And we do ginger and shallots on it with a little bit of oil. And um, I really actually enjoy my food. So, you know, enjoy your food. Make good choices. Um, don't overeat. And certainly stay away from the processed carbs. And if you really enjoy the processed carbs and you like pizza and you like pasta and you love ice cream, I love ice cream. I have it once a week. Oh, yeah. I, yes, yeah, Saturday night, I went for burgers on Saturday night with chips with my kids and went to Messina ice cream. And um, I would say if you're not getting ready for I would do that when I get ready for, ready for a contest, one meal a week, whatever I want. Um, for the actors, I would say stay as strict as you can throughout the week. On the weekends, have some treats. But stay as strict mm. as you can in the week. Make good choices. Because the other, the other thing with making good choices, and it's most of the reason I do it, it's to keep your energy high. It's to keep your energy high, to keep your blood sugar stable as well. You, I know with acting, you guys actually work hard 
when you're making a movie, up to 16 hours a day mm. on set, they're long days. You need to keep your energy high. When you have big loads of carbohydrates, you have a big bowl of pasta, or you have a big thing of hot chips, um, porridge not so much, but if, for some reason, if you had a big bowl of porridge, you have those big serves of that type of starchy carbohydrate, you get so sleepy and so sluggish. You need to keep your energy high. So lean source proteins, fruits and vegetables, and some essential fats. I mean, I love coconut oil. In the offset, I, I don't, in the off season for me, a lot of people say, do you eat a lot in the off season? I don't eat a lot in the off season. I just add oil. I add oil to my meals. I had 20, 30 mils of olive oil on every meal and I keep eating wow. the same foods. That's my only difference. I add oil. I have a lot of coconut oil with my first meal because I get the energy from the coconut oil. So I have that with my, my porridge, my oatmeal, or I put it in my protein shake. So lean source proteins, fruits and veggies and, and essential fatty acids and stay well hydrated as you are. Stay well hydrated. Yes. Because we need, yeah, we, you know, we don't want to get overweight, but we don't want to be sluggish. So the foods I'm talking about will keep your energy levels high. That's beautiful. And so it's, again, we just come back to that balance and about having it. So, you know, you can have your, you can have your treats and stuff like that. And uh, if we're talking uh, the, the chemicals, you can still have your glass of red wine, can't you? It's, Absolutely, it's gonna... David. I still do. Mm. I, I had a, I love port and red wine. There, that's the alcohol that I like. I, I'm not a big drinker, but I had um, two glasses of grandfather. I had three glasses actually Saturday night with my ice cream. I was like nice. a, I was like nice. a pig in a pen, mate. I sat on the couch with my kids and ate, <laughs> ate my Messina ice cream and had three glasses of port. And it was, um, I don't know. That, that's 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 joy. That's happiness for me. And you certainly awesome. can do that. Absolutely can do that. Excellent. And uh, now I, I touched on it before, Nick. How does that change as we get older? Mm. Uh, uh, whether I'm bodybuilding like I am now, or mm. for the older actors out there, does does the um, the diet need to change? Mm. Is um, I find that now that I'm fifty, and as you get older, the more crappier food you eat, the quicker you can put the weight on. Mm. And then when you turn on the switches and try to get into shape, it's a lot harder to go back the other way. Mm. Obviously, the body's changing, so. Do we need to do anything differently or just to try not to be out of shape when we get to 50? <laughs> that's a great question. I mean, it's, you get out of shape, it's hard to get back. I think that's mm. obvious that it gets harder and harder the older we get to get back. So, you know, to try and maintain it. But again, you've got to enjoy it. You've got to enjoy your food. You've got to enjoy the exercise you do. If you don't like going to the gym to lift weights, don't. If you enjoy tennis, play mm. tennis. If you enjoy swimming, swim. If you enjoy mountain biking, mountain bike. If you enjoy walking, walk. Do some exercise you enjoy and, and eat the foods you enjoy, but make sure they're the right ones. So with the food, what I think and what I've seen and spoken to older bodybuilders over the years, we just don't need as much carbohydrate as we used to. Our metabolism does slow down with age. And there are two things that stimulate and speed up the metabolism. There are two things. One is obviously exercise. The other one is eating. And again, eating these certain foods. And the foods are lean source proteins and fibrous vegetables. They're the types of foods that stimulate the metabolism. They're the types of foods that keep us mentally sharp. It's those big bowls of pasta, it's the bread, it's the pizzas, it's the carbohydrates, it's the risottos. We just don't need that much carbohydrate. In fact, I think we run a lot cleaner, our, our systems run a lot cleaner with energy production when we use fats. So for me, I much prefer and I know as I get older, I'll, I'll probably reduce the carbs even more, but I do it now. I have very moderate carbs. I have moderate to high protein, lots of veggies, but I add olive oil to every single meal uh, and or coconut oil to meal one. Sometimes coconut oil, I put in my coffee as well. I love coconut oil in my coffee. <laughs> so again, I don't have milk. So it's, it's again, it's the sugar in milk that's the issue. Um, yeah, fair enough. Yeah, it's the sugar, 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 sugar and processed carbs. We need less. They are poison to us, especially as we get older. They, like you say, they don't take long to store. You eat those and blood sugar shoots up. It's, it's that blood sugar. We've got to watch the sugar. So eliminate the starchy processed carbs. Reduce the heavy starchy foods like pasta and bread um, and white rice. Just reduce the quantities. Have a little bit, but lean source proteins, fresh veggies, some fruits, particularly berries are great for us, and some essential fats. So when I'm saying essential fats, almost anything that's liquid at room temperature, 
apart from, say, avocados and nuts and seeds, they've got essential fats and a solid at room temperature. Otherwise, if it's liquid at room temperature, if it's a cold-pressed oil, if it's in a dark bottle, have a tablespoon or two on each meal as a rule, and you'll find your blood sugar is a lot more stable. Wow. You won't crave as much carbohydrate. You won't. If you have if you have a chicken salad or fish and veggies and, and, and uh, maybe a small amount of starchy carbs, but if you put 10 to 20 mils of olive oil on there, you will not be hungry for another three hours. And again, don't snack. Eat meals. Don't snack. It's like snacking... I don't know where these three meals and two snacks came from. I don't get it. I, I used to eat meals. It's a bodybuilding thing to eat meals, but you're better off mm. not snacking. You, you eat a meal, so you eat your brekkie, you go for maybe three, four hours, then you eat another meal. You go for three or four, and we're busy anyway. You go for another three yes. or four hours, you mm. eat another meal. And the, again, mm. the meals are a balance of lean source protein, fresh veggies or some fruits being berries, and a, and a small mm. to moderate amount of complex carbs like brown rice, jacket potatoes, oatmeal if it's a breakfast, you know, an unprocessed, unprocessed mm. grain uh, with some essential fats. Yeah, I've, I've been doing the, uh, the fasting principle for probably 10, 15 years now, yep. which I, I love. It works really good for my shift work. And yeah. Um, so, yeah, you've got an eight-hour uh, eating window, so you don't have time for meals or, and you certainly don't have time for snackings. And the biggest thing I've found for that, and this is good with the, the age, is um, – uh, one of the reasons I, I took on the fasting, and I know a lot of um, advocates in the fitness industry, they either love it or they don't like it. Yeah. Um, I, so I read that it's, yeah. there's a boost to your growth hormone, which yeah. is naturally yeah. declining at our age. And it's surprising because I still go and do my bloods with my doctor. And I asked him, I said, can you, can you do my um, uh, test for my testosterone levels as well? And he said, oh, look, tend not to do that because if there's a problem you you'll have indicators that i'll test but i'll test for it anyway so he did and then when i came back he was surprised because they they'd risen mm. and so i i'm advocating that my you know my fasting principle is working the higher protein and the lower carb diet mm. in that sort of regime works really well for me so mm. again it boils down to if it works don't change it isn't it yeah, absolutely. If it's if it's uh, not not broken, you just keep doing it. And, and of course, mm. weight training stimulates growth hormone and testosterone over and above cardiovascular. Cardio is great for heart health, for the cardiovascular system, but certainly mm. weight training for bone density, for joint integrity, to maintain muscle on the body, but definitely for growth hormone production and testosterone production. It, it's the way to go. Um, mm. Like you say, fasting as well. Fasting will help to stimulate growth hormone. Absolutely. Cool. And in relation to supplementation, Nick, obviously your background with Gentech and that, yeah. um, in, in this environment that we live in now, everyone's struggling financially to, to even just to buy that healthy food and everything. And, and actors could be living from paycheck to paycheck. Yep. Um, would you recommend uh, if, if someone did had a minimal amount and had to just want to do some sort of supplementation, what would be your number one supplementation to help you in the gym and to, to push you through those barriers. To help you in the gym or help you with general health? Uh, maybe both. Mm, okay, I'll give you two options. For general health, for me, a great probiotic. And they're very, very hard to know what's a great probiotic. So it's something Definitely. like acidophilus strain, there's about 29 strains of acidophilus available commercially. And there's only a handful of them that work, that improve your good gut bacteria. So to know which ones is a bit of a minefield. I do know, again, I don't get paid for this. I do know the owner of a probiotic company called, uh, the product's called ProGood. And um, mm -hmm. I, I love it. So I've been using it for about seven years. I've started selling it on my website. So it's not a promotion to, to get you to my website to buy it. But to me, uh, for overall general health, forget about a multivitamin, work on your gut health, get a good quality probiotic and use it most mornings. Um, so because that'll boost your immune system, our neurotransmitters, mm -hmm. our feel good neurotransmitters, dopamine, epinephrine, norepinephrine, serotonin, they're produced in our gut. They're not produced in our brain. So it's crucial oh, wow. to have. Yeah, it's crucial to have good gut health. So general health, a great probiotic is your first forget about forget about um, synthetic multivitamin. Uh, the only other product for general health, I'd say get a super greens type of product. But uh, either or, either or, I prefer the probiotic. And again, if you're cash strapped, you might do the greens every day, a super greens product, um, gotcha. you know, every day for a, a, a few weeks and then do the pro good for a few weeks. And you, you see 
what makes your energy higher and, and wards off uh, colds and flus, etc. As far okay. as, yeah, so general health, as far as bodybuilding, I'm a bit unorthodox, but it's, it's come through... Um, it's come through years and years of practice and research. I love an intra-workout supplement of carbohydrates, creatine, amino acids, and electrolytes. I build a product called P2P. You drink yes, it before it. and during your workout. It fuels my workouts. Most consumers would use a pre-workout product to get that kick and get that high from all the caffeine and stimulants. And then they'd use a, a protein after training to help recovery. I would say... For my priorities, it would be intra-workout's most important for me, then my post-workout protein, then my pre-workout um, stimulant style of product. But ultimately, pre, intra, post, that's what, a, that's what you do for an elite-ish level bodybuilder that wants to maximize yes. their results. Because the rest of the time, food can do what supplements can do. But during that point in time, pre-workout, during the workout, immediately after, Food can't do what those supplements are doing. So it's really a it's really a performance enhancement using a pre-workout. It's a performance enhancement using an intra-workout, but it also helps to reduce breakdown during the workout. And then it's and then it's accelerated recovery by using a post-workout protein. I love it. It's mm. awesome. Awesome, Nick. Well, thank you very much. Uh, Pleasure. I, I know you're you're very busy and it's a Monday for you, so you've mm. probably got a lot of paperwork <laughs> and stuff to do. Just one last question for you. What three things would you um, tell an actor if they walked into a, a fitness center with you? Uh, what three things would you recommend that they do or implement in their lifestyle uh, for a better life and to, to make their, uh, their acting journey a, a more healthy and, and, and easier regime going with all the stresses that come with it? And it's not just actors. Everyone goes mm. through the same stresses. Mm. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a great question. I mean, I would ask them first, are they getting ready for a certain role? You know, if it's Chris Hemsworth getting ready for Thor or if it's it's Arnold's got a bit out of shape and he's got to uh, do the Expendables, what are they up to, four or five or six? I don't know. But, I think so. Yeah, so just depending if they're getting ready for a role and need to be lean and muscular, they've got to implement a bodybuilding lifestyle to build muscle and lose fat, and, and it's pretty full on. For, for general health, wellness, longevity, vitality, flexibility, um, and again, I, my, I, most people, when they come to the gym, most people, when you ask them, what do you want to achieve? They say, I want to tone up a little bit. You go, okay, you want to tone up a bit? Yeah, yeah, I want to get a bit fitter. Tone up a bit and get a bit fitter. Go, okay, you want to get fitter? And they go, yeah, yeah, I want to get fitter. Like, feel like I did when I was 20. Okay, well, I mean, I could train you for a half marathon. You could train a half marathon. You could run a half marathon in 12 weeks from nothing to 12 weeks. Would you like that? I'd love that. But you'd still look the way you do. Oh, no, I don't want that. Okay, well, what about we did no marathon running and we did some weight training and we manipulated nutrition and you could look like you'd be on the cover of a men's health magazine in 12 weeks. What do you think of that? Yeah, that sounds good. So, I mean, most people want to look better naked. That's when they, they, still, they come to the gym, most want to look better naked. It's like, let's be honest, what do you want to do? So really, it's it's all of it's a dumbed down version of a bodybuilding lifestyle. It's called body recomposition. We want to build some muscle, mm -hmm. lose some fat. In doing that, we need to do a full body program. Whether you're, let's say, you need to train each body part once a week. So let's say you're going to the gym. You say, okay, I can come to the gym twice a week. All right, then. Well, let's do lower body one day and upper body the next. Let's get some good mobility work before the workout so we can maintain your flexibility and vitality. So mobility work, I'm talking dynamic stretching. Um, I, I've got a, I've got a bunch of this stuff on my website and on my social media, mm. which you can hopefully give give uh, the listeners after. Yeah, so I'll put it in the um, show notes for sure. Yeah, so definitely some mobility work before the workout. We train each body part or area once a week at least, um, one and a half maybe maximum. And then um, your nutrition, like we've been talking about, eat some lean source proteins, good quality fruits and vegetables, eliminate the sugars, eliminate the processed carbohydrates, drink plenty of water, because ultimately you can train as hard as you want. And if your diet is out the window, you can actually go to the gym. But if your diet is that bad, you can increase body fat levels and lose muscle, even if you're going mm. to the gym, if your diet is that bad. You can't out-train a bad diet. You just can't. So the like nutrition that. has to take as much, if not more, precedence than the exercise. Well, that's a perfect way to end it, um, the, the podcast, Nick. Thank you very much. My pleasure. I think um, 
it's as I said to you, it was, I really wanted you to get you on the on the show um, for actors to learn about your health and wellness. And there's so much in this for actors, but anyone else that's listening. So it's brilliant. So thank you very much. Um, now, where can everyone uh, find you? Uh, you've got to, you're on social media, both as uh, Nick Jones and Gentech. Is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. So Gentech Nutrition, G E N T E C Nutrition. Um, and Nick Jones, world champion. It's, it's not a narcissistic thing. It was, I just put it in when it's I was doing my social media a long, long, long time ago. So Nick Jones, world champion for all my personal stuff. And I give away a lot of, a lot of training information and nutrition information. Cause again, it's, I'm at that point in my life where it's nice to serve I've, you know, it's, I've, I love it. You know, it's just that, that, that point in my life, it's time to give back and, and, uh, I'm doing pretty well. Everything's good. And it, it makes me feel good. That's what makes me happy is being able to to give back so if you jump on either one of those my website gen-tech.com.au has a workout club it's free it's got workouts on there nutrition plans they're free just join it it's free that's wonderful thank you very much nick thanks um, david it's been a pleasure to have you on board Likewise. and um it's uh we'll see you in the gym yeah look forward to it be well everyone bye for now <laughs>